And David, at your home, uh, you have a caboose in the backyard. Is that right? I do. I do. I have. I have a caboose. What I have. The caboose. Do? There is a picture of it. Wow! It looks like a nice caboose. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Ryan. That's did you, very. Did you remodel forward, the caboose but... there? It looks like you did some work. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I. I. Well, I was rebuilding the the actual house, so I thought, you know, I had this train car in the backyard for whatever reason. It just came with the property. It's, it's kind of a mystical thing back there, and I thought, oh, well, why don't I, why don't I just live in that? And that while the, the house is getting built, because coming from New York, of course, you know, I, I, I enjoy construction noise. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> um, wait, I have to ask how much of how much of your decision making to buy the property was, in fact, the caboose more than anything <laughs> else? Uh, 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 zero. I mean, because I, I thought it was just when I bought it, the caboose was kind of cordoned off. Uh, oh, by fence because it was kind of rotting and, and there was nothing going on in there. Um, uh, so it, I just love, I did love the fact that it was there. It was just a cool thing to kind of look at. And, and I have to say that, that having been in the caboose for like a year or two years while the house was being built and having written this book in there as well, which I loved just having this small space in the middle of it all, I was just like, I don't need a house. I just live in the caboose. But <laughs> Back of the train.